Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, and this is Getting Started with MicRim OS. In our last few episodes, we've been exploring the various kernel services that MicRim OS provides to your application that allow interaction between tasks. Today, in the final episode in this series, we'll look at services that enable tasks to send and receive practically any sort of data for any purpose. Over the last four episodes, we've discussed task synchronization and resource protection. And if you haven't watched them yet, you should check them out first. The final topic on kernel services that we'll consider is intertask communication using message queues. Intertask communication services provide multitask applications with unique messaging capabilities. But the implementation of these services in MicRim OS is based on the same pinned and post operations that we encountered in our previous discussions. The pinned operation enables a task to receive a message, and it can result in the task entering a wait state until a message is available. The post operation is used for sending a message, and it is capable of making a waiting task ready to run. Because pending involves the possibility of a task transitioning to a waiting state, pinned operations are not allowed in interrupt handlers. Only tasks can pin. Or, in other words, only tasks can attempt to receive messages. However, both tasks and interrupt handlers are allowed to post or send messages. And, as we saw in our episode on semaphores, these restrictions apply to pinned and post operations in general. The primary means of intertask communication offered by MicRim OS is the message queue. Your application creates queues in the same sense that it creates semaphores and mutexes, and the kernel is responsible for managing them. Thus, a post is really an instruction to the kernel to place a message into a queue while a pinned is an instruction to remove a message. The functions for performing a pinned and post on a message queue, as well as for creating a queue, are shown here. The prototypes of these functions are similar in many ways to the prototypes of the semaphore and mutex functions that we've already discussed. As you might expect, message queues require a different data structure than semaphores and mutexes. The type is OSQ. Your application must declare one of these structures for each of its queues and then initialize the structure through OSQ create. Of course, the properties of a queue are different than those of a semaphore or mutex. One of the differences is evident in the third argument of the create function, which is the queue capacity. When creating a queue, your application doesn't actually have to allocate memory space for the queue itself, but it must indicate to the kernel the number of messages that the queue will be capable of holding. The kernel will obtain data structures from an internal pool to implement a queue of the specified size. The queues that are produced by OSQ Create are not manipulated directly by your application. Instead, you access them indirectly by calls to OSQ Pend and OSQ Post. The first argument in each of these functions is the OSQ pointer, which identifies the target of the function's operations. Your application must ensure that only initialized OSQ structures are used for pend and post calls. For maximum flexibility, the message type in MicRim OS is a void pointer. The pin function returns a message of this type, and the post function expects application code to provide a void pointer message. This is done through the function's second argument. The void pointer message creates a potential problem in that the data referenced by the pointer can be of any size. For example, a task could place a message referencing just a 32-bit integer into a queue. But subsequently, it could load the queue with a reference to a data structure of several kilobytes in size. To help your pending tasks deal with this sort of variation, you can provide the size of a message via the third argument of OSQ post. The message size is made available to the task that reads the message through the fourth argument of OSQ pinned. Passing size data along with the message itself eliminates the need for your application to implement a custom message format that includes a size or length field. One final aspect of pending and posting that we should consider is the manner in which messages are loaded into each queue. This is actually specified on a per message basis through the fourth argument of OSQ post. Application code can specify first in, first out ordering, or last in, first out behavior for any message. Now let's have a look at an example that shows how your application might take advantage of message queues. This example involves a task and an interrupt handler that share responsibility for servicing an A to D converter. The interrupt handler reads each value produced by the converter, and the task processes the values. In between the circles representing the task and the ISR are a couple of symbols. The one shaped a bit like a series of mailboxes indicates the message queue. 
the hourglass symbol indicates that there's a timeout associated with the queue. So let's have a look at some pseudocode that shows how a queue can be used to pass the values from the interrupt handler to the task. In the first line, we find the declaration of an OSQ data structure named appQADC. Following the declaration is a call to OSQ create, which initializes this data structure. The create function sets up a queue with a capacity of 20, as you can see in the function's third argument. This snippet of pseudocode is the A to D interrupt handler that is responsible for posting the queue. The handler first reads an A to D value and then clears an interrupt flag. Note that these operations are in no way specific to MicRim OS and might be found in any application using an A to D converter. The handler's final operation is a call to OSQ post, and this is where we leverage the inner task communication capabilities of the kernel. One of two things can happen here. The first scenario would be that no pinned operation had been performed before this call. In this case, a reference to the most recently read A to D value would be placed in the queue. The address of this value would be provided to the kernel via the function's second argument. And the message would be added to the queue in a first in, first out manner as a result of the option passed through the post function's fourth argument. The second scenario would be that a pinned operation had been performed before the call. In this case, the A to D value would immediately be passed on to the pending task, and that task would be moved into the ready state. Now let's have a look at the task that is responsible for handling the data from the A to D converter. The task begins with a line that performs initializations. We can assume this code sets up the A to D peripheral to produce periodic conversions. Following the initialization, the task attempts to retrieve the results of the first conversion by calling OSQ pinned. Here, one of two things can happen. If the queue is empty, the task enters a wait state. If the queue is not empty, the call to OSQ pinned returns promptly with a message. As we saw a moment ago, the ISR specifies first in, first out behavior for its post calls. So, the message retrieved by the task would actually be the oldest one available. After the pin call is a single line of pseudocode that processes the value retrieved from the queue. In a real application, this code would likely be much more than a single line. Why do I bring this up? Well, a major benefit of using queues is that they enable such code to be offloaded from interrupt handlers to tasks. And thanks to the task scheduling abilities built into the queues, such code can still provide a timely response to urgent events. Queues share some of the attributes of semaphores. As you may recall from one of our earlier episodes, a semaphore also provides a means of offloading work from ISRs. However, semaphores merely signal tasks, whereas queues can be viewed as signaling and providing data. So, to sum up what we learned today, message queues can send literally any kind of data between tasks, and they use pinned and post calls, similar to semaphores. The pinned operation enables a task to receive a message. The post operation is used for sending a message. And the post is capable of making a waiting task ready to run. Finally, only tasks can pin. ISRs cannot. But both tasks and ISRs are allowed to post. And that brings us to the end of Getting Started with MicRim OS. Over the last 10 episodes, we've covered a dizzying range of kernel topics. Certainly, if you're learning about kernel programming for the first time, it can be easy to get lost in a sea of unfamiliar terms and API functions. Each of the topics that we discussed in this series could be covered in much more detail. For proof of this, you can consult the myriad technical articles, books, and PhD theses that are available on these topics. But to begin writing multitask applications around a kernel like MicRim OS, you don't need to be an expert in every aspect of multitasking theory and practice. With just the basic information provided in this series, you should be well prepared to begin experimenting with MicRim OS and writing simple multitask applications of your own. I'm Matt Gordon, and this has been Getting Started with MicRim OS. Thanks for watching.